guys, welcome to another chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the ChemEng student. In this lesson we're going to take a look at the idea and equations that govern convective mass transfer. We're going to take a look at the equations that govern two different types of convective mass transfer and we'll see the basic and the more advanced uh, equations that you will need in order to solve a wide range of convective mass transfer problems. So, say we take a solid with a uniform concentration, and let's imagine that we surround this solid with liquid that is um, moving, so we have liquid in motion. Then what we can say here is that the concentration, we can create what's called a concentration profile of the soluble material, and we're going to call this soluble material A. Now what this will look like is if we take the solid, which will be the soluble material that will dissolve in the liquid, then from this point here is CA1, so that's the initial concentration. So what we expect here is this is going to be the highest point on the concentration other than from the solid. So in the liquid phase, this should be the highest concentration of the soluble material. And you can see that it will taper off and eventually level off as equilibrium is established. Now classic examples of this would be things like dissolving sugar in tea or coffee. So you have the, the solid material with a uniform concentration dissolving in the coffee. Now similarly what we could have here is we could also have the idea of gas bubbles dissolving in a surrounding liquid. So rather than dealing with a solid, we could deal with a gas liquid system, or we could also have volatile solids that disperse into surrounding gases. So again, you can we can apply these general principles to a wide range of different examples. Now, say for example, we have no convection, then in terms of mass transfer, it will follow Fick's law. Now, we go into a lot of detail um, about all the different equations um, for mass transfer uh, in our mass transfer course. I'll put a link in the description to that um, and you can check that one out. We also have some free resources on our blog. Um, I'll also put a link into that as well. And that goes into a lot of the details on the derivation of Fick's law and how we actually use certain mass transfer principles. But here we're just going to take a look at the convective mass transfer. So say we didn't have any convection, then we would be governed by Fick's law. And that is minus DAB, this is the diffusivity, so the diffusivity of A into B, multiplied by the change in the concentration divided by the change in the distance. Now say for example we have fluid in motion, then we need to add the mean eddy diffusivity. So we retain Fick's law, but this time, instead of having the uh, diffusivity of DAB, we now need to account for the mean eddy diffusivity because remember, when we talk about improving or increasing the rate of mass transfer, if we induce turbulence to the system, that will increase the diffusivity. So therefore, we have to add in the mean diffusivity of the eddies. Now, we can also expand on this further and take it away from a differential equation because we could actually specify between two specific points within the system. So say we wanted to be between concentration point 1, so that would be CA1, and concentration point 2, that would be CA2. Then we could actually denote these as a distance. So we'd measure it Z2 minus Z1. So that way, we actually get a set of boundary conditions. Now, the eddy diffusivity uh, here is quite hard to track because we are working with, you know, if we talk about the, the film boundary layer, then we're talking about a very small uh, proportion of the system, but more importantly, we're dealing with uh, turbulent systems. And turbulent systems are very, very difficult to get an accurate prediction and model to explain their behavior. Because they are so randomized, um, this type of thing is very difficult to track. So there is different solutions proposed depending on the case that you have. 
But the usual statement still applies here is that the total flux is equal to k prime c multiplied by the change in the concentration. And remember that the lowercase um, k uh, prime would be the local mass transfer uh, coefficient, but we can also have the standard mass transfer uh, coefficient for either the liquid or the solid or whatever component it is that you want. Now, the first one that we'll look at is case number one is film theory. And we'll use the same example here, whereby we have the solid with a uniform concentration within a liquid body. Now, all the resistance to mass transfer will take place within the film adjacent to the boundary. So after a certain point, which if we define this here, is this is essentially the change in the concentration profile until it steadies itself off. Because after it has steadied itself off, the resistance to the mass transfer between the solid and the liquid is no longer there. It's no longer, this is the resistance point here. So what we call that is we call it the film diffusiv diffusivity. So what we then say here is that the... At sigma f, because it is so small and, again, it's so randomized, it's unmeasurable. Because this will change slightly depending on the type of system. But it can also change depending on the operating conditions. So, as you may or may not know, that the change in, say, the temperature, so an increase in temperature will increase the rate of mass transfer. Similarly, if we change the pressures, that will also affect, depending on if we have compressible fluids or incompressible fluids, then uh, it can get very, very messy. But again, we talk about this not only in our mass transfer course, but we also go into the details as well on a thermodynamic level um, in our thermodynamics course. So again, that's just something that if you're interested in, um, I'll put a link in the description to that and you can check that one out. Now, experiments show... Because again, this has to be done experimentally, and it shows that K prime C isn't proportional to the diffusivity. So, what we essentially say here is that the total flux, the Na, which is equal to the K prime C um, multiplied by the change in the concentrations at uh, uh, point 0.1 and point 0.2, will be equal to the ratio between the diffusivity and the film uh, region multiplied by Ca1 uh, minus Ca2. So despite these flaws though, film theory is very simple because rather than saying if we know what K prime C is, we can just replace that with the diffusivity divided by the distance of the film. But it can be used in other problems, but that's where the case number two comes in, whereby we have the penetration theory. The penetration theory assumes that the fluid will, or the film, act as packets. And this is like different chunks of the fluid travelling to and from the boundary conditions. Now, for laminar um, bulk fluid flow, then what we have here is TL. Now, TL is the penetration time for the, the solute through the film. So what this is essentially saying here is that this is the time that it will take for the the bulk of the, the packets to travel from this point here to this point here. So rather than it being denoted by sigma, now we're saying we're going to give this a time parameter. So it's actually how long it's going to take for this material to pass from the solid through the boundary layer and out towards the equilibrium position. Now, turbulent bulk has a different formula, but here in this video, we're only going to concern ourselves with the laminar flow because the laminar flow is easier to model. And what this would tell us is that the, um, the local mass transfer coefficient in terms of diffusivity is proportional here. And it's proportional by the square root of 4 multiplied by the diffusivity divided by pi multiplied by the penetration time. So again, these are just uh, correlations that you should keep in mind when you come across a wide range of different problems.
Now, say, for example, we have uh, equimolar counter-diffusion, then the total flux equation still stands. But let's say, for example, we have diffusion of A through a stagnant layer of B, i.e. we have the solute passing through the liquid. Then what we can say here is that we can introduce the XBM parameter because that will account here for the localized system. Now, we can clearly see that in this case, when we bring it to the total, so the uh, total flux is equal to the overall um, mass transfer coefficient for that component multiplied by the change in the concentrations is very similar to the convective heat transfer formula whereby we have Q prime over A equals the enthalpy multiplied by the difference in the temperatures. So there is a very similar um, relationship between these. And again, that should make sense because we're dealing with convection. So there will be similarities between the behavior of um, the, the material and the equations that govern these types of systems. Now, sometimes, though, concentration isn't the most convenient measurement. Sometimes it's better to do it in terms of partial pressure, or we could even do it in terms of mole fractions. And the mole fractions, say, for instance, the liquid or the gases, um, is probably one of the more convenient ways um, of solving it if you cannot do it uh, through concentration. Now, the alternative expressions here, then, would say that if we had... Um, in terms of partial pressures, then we would have Kg prime, so that is of the gas, because remember the partial pressures are going to deal with gas systems. So we'd have the uh, local mass transfer coefficient of the gas multiplied by the change in the partial pressures, or the Ky and the Kx and the Y and the X here, these are denoting the mole fractions of the liquid, so liquid for the X and Y for the gas. So again, the, the equations still have the same, you know, setup. They still show the same characteristics. It's just the variables are slightly different. But let's take a look at the different relationships between these various coefficients for equimolar convective counter diffusion. So given that we have the ideal gas, so we'll take an ideal gas and we'll say that the concentration is equal to the pressure divided by the universal gas constant R multiplied by the temperature. Therefore, what we can say here is that we can replace the system here. So K prime C mul multiplied by the change in the concentration. If we wanted to express this in terms of partial pressure, all we have to do is rearrange this equation. Because instead of having K prime C, we will then divide it by RT. So K prime C divided by RT, that means we can then express this in a change in pressure. And likewise, we can express K prime C over RT as K prime G. And that's what we've seen in the previous slide. So rather than having to write this all the time, what we can do is just express that as K prime G i.e. in terms of the gas. Now, given that we apply Dalton's law, which is that the overall pressure, so the partial pressure is equal to the fraction of the component multiplied by the total pressure. So say, for example, we know that, so P total would equal um, PA plus PB. But we would also need to account here for, um, I'll put in the x a here and the y b here. So these are the fractions that correspond to each of the independent um, species. So for the partial pressure of A, we need to account for what that um, fraction would be in the entire system. So say, for example, we had a, a vessel and we had 60% was A and 40% was B, then YA here would be 0 0.6 because that accounts for 60% of the overall system. So we multiply that by the total pressure and that tells us the influence or the partial pressure of component A. Now again, we just replace these systems. So 
we have the same scenario here, but we can make this equal to the total pressure multiplied by kg prime. And that will give us it in terms of the change in the, the partial pressures. So we can also express that as ky prime, because now we're getting it in terms of the mole fractions, because it's the mole fraction of what is each component bringing to the table. So again, you can do that for uh, kx prime as well as exactly the same scenario. And that's just the, the result on how we get ky prime from the k prime c p total divided by rt. So again, you can follow that across and make sure that you are happy and you are able to derive these um, three correlations. Now, say, for example, we have a liquid this time, then we couldn't do it necessarily in terms of partial pressures. So what we say here is that, like Dalton's law, we say that the concentration of A is equal to the mole fraction of A multiplied by the average concentration. And the principle still stands, is that kx prime is equal to c, the co average concentration, multiplied by the local mass transfer coefficient. And this is, would be the relationship between the mass transfer coefficients, exactly the same as what we've seen before. So the only difference here is we can't do it in terms of pressures because... Um, we aren't necessarily working with ideal gases. We're working now with liquids. So the pressures would come into effect predominantly if we work with uh, non-Newtonian fluids. Now, for stagnant layer diffusion, there are, however, alternative expressions for both phases. Now, the equimolar counter diffusion is corrected, and we've seen these correction factors, XBM or YBM, and we can express these and we can get the Kc rather than the K prime C or Kc prime, however you want to pronounce it. So we need to, if we don't know the mass transfer coefficient for the overall component, then we would need to know it in a localized sense. And again, we can apply the same scenario to all of the different variations of that um, equimolar counter diffusion convective mass transfer formula. So again, you can just go back through them and make sure that you're comfortable with the the change of the units as well, or adding in that corrected um, XBM or YBM factor. Now conversions can also be made between the various coefficients themselves as well. So again, we see that from earlier, we had this relationship, for gases, we can create this relationship. So that says now incorporating those corrected factors. And then for liquids, we could have this system here as well. So depending on the information that you have, then if you ever need to solve for convective mass transfer, you need to know what the coefficients are. You can always come back to this video, or if you have one of our courses, you always have access to this key information that you can find very, very easily. So it's a good reference point to know that whatever piece of information you have, you will always be able to solve your system. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful in understanding the idea and concept of convective mass transfer. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we we'll hope to see you in another video.